The sycamore tree is a short tree. That's why Zacchaeus can climb it. But it has big branches. When I was a young man, I used to climb the tree and my grandfather had the guava tree. So, when I would reach the guava, you have to make sure you, you step on the, on the branch to pick the guava. I can imagine Zacchaeus has to lean to the branch that goes next to the road. And then he is standing there. He only wanted to see Jesus. But then Jesus reaches there. I said, oh, there, that's Jesus. Jesus looks up. What does everybody in the crowd do? They also look up. <sighs> what do you think the people were thinking about this, Zacchaeus? Look at this sinner. Look at this man who steals our money. But Jesus says to him, you see, Jesus knows your name. Amen? Jesus has never met him before. There is a song that says, he knows your name. Amen? Before even when you meet Jesus, he knows your name. In fact, he knows the numbers of your hair. Amen? So the Bible says that he says to him, Zacchaeus, oh, I mean, you, you're talking to me? Jesus, you, come down. Jesus says to him, I must. Everybody say, I must. I must eat in your house. Let me tell you this, church. When Zacchaeus woke up that morning, he, he only ate breakfast alone. He was a lonely man. There are some things money cannot buy. Money cannot buy friends. Thank you. Zacchaeus was a lonely man. He was sad. He was unhappy. He wanted more. He wanted more. And Jesus knew that. And so Jesus says, even though you ate breakfast alone, today I am having dinner with you. Amen. So Zacchaeus came down quickly. There are some people here today, especially Adventists, we, we don't have visitors in our home. We make excuse. Oh, I don't have shopping. I need to go to save more first before I have visitors. I need to buy money in Palenque. I need to buy food. But Zacchaeus did not care about that. He said, come Jesus, come. Yes, yes, come to my home. The song that was sung here, God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Zacchaeus, when he woke up that morning, he never imagined that Jesus would be his guest for dinner. He never imagined. Maybe some of us, we came today to church. Jesus has a plan for your life. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 and 9. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. God is saying, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Zakir had the best day, the best night of his life. Now, when he is eating, the people started chica chica. Hello? Oh, look, Jesus is eating with a sinner. 
Yeah. Stop, stop. And while they were eating, Zacchaeus is listening. Jesus is listening. The Bible says Zacchaeus stands up and he says, Lord, I will give half of my money to the poor. Amen. And then he says, if I have stolen from anyone, I'm going to give how much? Four times. Four times. Do you think Zacchaeus will have money when he's finished? No. Probably he will not be rich anymore. But he did not care. I can imagine he went to, you know these days, our houses, our homes. Maybe some of you have homes like that. They, they build homes and they have a place they call a safe. A safe. You know what's a safe? That is the bank in your house that has the gold. Where you put all the money there. In those days, in the Bible times, I don't know what kind of safe they had. But I can imagine Zacchaeus opening his house and and taking out the money that he had stolen from the people. He said to Jesus, Lord, I give it. I give it back. You know, tax collectors were hated people. Why? Because they were treated like lepers. People did not want to associate with them. And Zacchaeus was tired of being rich. He wanted, he wanted a transformed life. In this world today, where the rich get richer, every man for himself. When we meet Jesus, our life will never be the same again. The rich young ruler met Jesus. And he left the presence of Jesus sorrowful. But Zacchaeus met Jesus, a better man. He became a better man. He left it all to follow Jesus. I want to ask you today, what is that thing that you need to let go of to follow Jesus? Young people, old people, church, what is holding you back? from following Jesus? Is it your money? Is it the video games? Is it the movies? Is it your children? Is it your business? Are you ready to let go for, of that to have Jesus in your life? What is that one thing that you need to let go? As I am about to finish, I realize one thing. When Jesus visits Zacchaeus, he tells him, this too is a child of Abraham. Jesus qualifies Zacchaeus before Zacchaeus is the exam. You see, God will give you an A plus before you take the exam. Amen. God will call Peter Cephas, which means rock. When, when Peter meets Reed, because Jesus, he saw that Peter who will preach in Pentecost and baptize 5,000. God can see the best in you. God calls Gideon, mighty warrior. Mighty warrior. Gideon tells him, Lord, I am the least in my family. God does not care about the way the world operates. In the world today, you have to perform to get the salary, right? You have to work. 
If I don't work, no salary. Jesus will give you the salary before you work. Amen? Amen. And so, he calls Zacchaeus a son of Abraham. And I believe that we too are the children of Abraham. Amen. When you accept Jesus into your life, whether black or white, whether tall or short, whether male or female, we too will become children of Abraham. And finally, I want to ask you, church, do people see Jesus in you? Do people, are the people drawn to Jesus because of you? A story is told of three rich men. These rich men, they were traveling in a Mercedes Benz. As they were driving, they passed by a countryside, a village. And that village was so poor, their houses did not have the roof. The people in the house did not have any food. The children were very hungry. So the rich man came out of the car. How many rich men? Three. Three. One of the rich men looked at the village and said, Oh, Grandpa, let's do something for these people. He went into the trunk of the car. He took out the briefcase. And he called the, the village chief. He said, Here, think. When the village chief opened, wow, there is the gold and the money, dollars. He said, thank you, thank you, thank you, so sal salamat. Ah, the other rich man said, I have a better idea. He called McDee, McDonald's. He called those fast food restaurants. And he ordered a lot of food. He said, these people are hungry. Bring them food. And their big trucks came with the pizza. Pizza Hut or Yellow Cup, I don't know. And they gave the food to the people. The people said, thank you. But the third rich man, he was quiet. They went into the car. They went back to the city. But he got home. And the other rich people were complaining. Oh, this rich man. He is a miser. He doesn't want to give anything to the poor. But that other rich man went to his house. He took out a big truck that he had, took the money. He went to the market. He bought the seeds and the fertilizer. He bought the tools and he went back to the village. Hello. Uh. And then he, he told the people, we can give you money, but money will not help you. We can give you food, but tomorrow you will be hungry. And he said, but let's go to the farm. And he taught them how to plant the corn, maize. And he planted the seeds. And the people said, thank you. Thank you, because your life is not about only what you give. It's not about only your time. You need to give your life to Jesus. Because he gave his life for you and for me. So I want to ask you, church, what is it today that you want to give to Jesus? He gave his life for you. Is it your talent? Is it your money? Is it your life? Give him your all, and your life will never be the same again. God bless you.